Hi, and welcome to another audio blog in our series on learning experience. Uh, I'm David Wentworth. I'm the Principal Learning Analyst here at Brandon Hall Group, and I'm joined by Carl Chrysostomo, who is the Product Manager for Content for Saba Software. And in this audio blog, we're going to talk a little bit about effectively measuring uh, the impact of a modern learning experience. We've got other audio blogs on the importance of this type of experience, what goes into a good learning experience, as well as the implementation of this type uh, of learning. And so uh, in this audio blog, we wanted to talk a bit about uh, measurement and um, how important it is that we are able to demonstrate value, uh, that, that this isn't just some sort of uh, fad that we're exploring, but there is value, and how do we demonstrate that? So Carl, with that, Let's just take a, the question at its face. How do you effectively measure the impact of this type of learning experience? Because it tends to be a, a bit different from the traditional learning and measurement models we've seen. Yeah, I, 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 thank you. Thank you, David. I think the, um, the good thing about a learning experience is you often have more data points to measure. You know, I think it goes beyond the usual scores and completions. And scores and completions have been the mainstay of learning measurement for a while now. But they are useful. You know, they provide insight. I think they're fairly narrow. So I think a modern learning experience usually gives us a lot more data points that we can use for measurement. Um, I'm just going to kind of focus on a, a, an example about measuring the experience itself. Um, so this uh, example comes out of our custom content team. Starba Studio. They recently created a program that's kind of focused around career conversations. It was a portal. It contained videos, PDF resources, links to learning and, and apps. Um, one of the apps included a tool to help you kind of rate the potential of your team members. And what they did there was they layered Google Analytics over this portal. Um, and, and this allowed you to measure a whole host of things. So um, there was you can measure video watches. You know, you may see that lots of people are watching the video on how to run a conversation with a low or poor performer. Um, there were things like bounce rates. There were things like how people interacted with the app. Um, so if the potential of your team tool is constantly outputting kind of low potential results, this could be an issue, especially if you match that with the video watches data, you know, you might start to, to um, uncover problems. And there are things in there as well of how people arrived at the portal. So all of those campaigns that you put in place to lure people to your, to your learning experience, how effective were they? You can kind of start gauging that. So this, this is, you know, this, this gives you a completely different level of insight than you would normally have when you're kind of delivering a, um, I suppose a less modern learning experience, and these you know these insights really allow you to to react with agility while you're implementing and, and delivering delivering your modern learning experience. So that that's the kind of stuff within the experience itself. Yeah, and I think this is an important turning point for organizations because one of the pushbacks we've always heard from a measurement standpoint is, well, we don't do a lot of this type of learning because we can't track and measure it. And the reality is you think companies can't track and measure it because it doesn't fit into the traditional measurement model. You, know, you can't measure by butts and seats and hours consumed. So they just think it can't be measured. Um, and if traditional measurement was getting the job done, like if, if, every, if people really could understand the impact of their learning programs, then I would say, okay, fine, let's leave it the way it is. But our research has shown, and we've talked to thousands of organizations, they're terrible at it. They're not good at measuring. They, they can basically measure completions and figure out how many people are going through their programs and whether they like them. But they're having a terrible time measuring the impact that it's having on the business. So why not take this opportunity to completely rethink your measurement strategy and focus on things like performance and outcomes? And, you know, on the one hand, you know, Carl, you're talking about this is so great. It gives us all these new data points and more data. Uh, I think a lot of organizations, they're scared of that. They, they can't even manage the data they already collect. But that's because they're trying to shove it into these boxes that don't work anymore. So the idea is open yourself up to these new interactions, these new data points, and realize that what you're getting from those is actual impact, right? It doesn't it's not so much now that, oh, somebody clicked on this and watched it or somebody clicked on this and interacted with it. That's the end of the story. It's more about because somebody clicked on this, 
X, Y, and Z happened. This thing happened faster, this thing happened better, um, whatever, it, whatever it is. But by changing your measurement thought process to fit more of this modern learning experience, you're actually doing yourself a huge favor in rethinking the way you measure learning in general, like focusing on these outcomes so that you're able to demonstrate the value of the learning and the impact it has. I think you know, one of the things I hear a lot, and Carl, you probably are used to this too, from a measurement standpoint is a company will say, well, I can't tell you that our training improved our sales performance, even though that's why we built it, that's why we delivered it. But I can't tell you that that's what it was because there are too many other variables, so why bother? And that's a complete cop out. You need to be able to demonstrate the impact that it does have and include those other variables because all those other variables, people are going to claim um, credit for those. So why doesn't learning claim credit for its role in um, how well things go? You know, and sometimes you get this pushback of, well, what if there's, what if things, things don't get better? What, what if there's a downturn? Well, if you're doing your job and you're doing your homework, you can be able to say, well, Yes, these other factors led to things turning down, but because we were able to train people this way, we were actually to, able to mitigate how bad things could have gotten. So learning really needs to take this active role and own the impact that it's having on outcomes. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Other departments do. Um, and when uh, a piece of uh, a change comes in, it might be a, a business objective, say, for example, um, around customer satisfaction. You know, you want to drive up, um, you want to drive up customer satisfaction scores because you can correlate an increase in revenue to that. You know, it's um, there may be a whole host of different initiatives going on that are going to um, impact um, that customer satisfaction. I think for learning development, they need to know where they fit within that picture. Um, they need to see how can we be really effective in helping um, drive, say, customer satisfaction up. And, and, they, and then they can really focus in on, you know, changing behavior, you know, you know, and, and looking at how they can change old habits and get people to, to, to form new ones. And I think it's, I think it's really important to understand that the, the change they're trying, the, the reason or the objective that they're going after, the change they want to enact and also looking at some, some direct measurements around that, but also not feel afraid to say, um, you know, we're part of this bigger thing. You know, we're part of improving customer satisfaction scores. We're part of increasing revenue. Um, I think it's really, really important to, for them to do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's just a matter of flipping a switch and doing this. Clearly, for a lot of organizations, this is a, a, a complete re-engineering of how they approach um, learning measurement. And it will may, for a lot of organizations, involve things like uh, either investing in a separate or in a in a tool that has one built in, but in a, something like a learning record store uh, or an LRS that's able to um, to you know, track and manage and store all of these different types of interactions because you're trying to measure things beyond just completions and file sheets. And so you might need some tools to do that. And I think the other key thing to really think about is what kind of data analysis horsepower does your organization have access to? Um, do you have data analysts within learning or are there data analysts in the building that can be shared by learning? Um, do you need external help with this? Because in order for this to work, um, you, know, you, you need people who are able to look at not just all the data that you're collecting from these learning experiences, but data from around the business so that you can actually ask the right questions and, and line these things up and see how things are working. And that takes um, a, a different skill set than we're used to using in this environment. So um, in order to get you know, serious about this, there are some things that uh, organizations are going to have to do. It's not as simple as um, using a different formula in an Excel spreadsheet and you're going to be able to do this. You really need to rethink um, the resources that you're putting towards measurement. Yeah, and that 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 point about skills um, is is really really interesting because I think it does need a brand new set of skills. You you often hear the phrase um, L and D needs to be more like marketing, and I think this is probably true. I think the CLO has probably got more in common with the CMO um, than um, most other functional heads within the within the organisation. Um, and when I go out and I speak to um, recruiters in our space. I think one of the things that they uh, are saying to me is that, you know, over the years, 
the job roles have been, uh, you know, there have been some incremental changes in the type of uh, job roles that um, they're being they're being asked to service. But more recently, there's been a big change, a kind of fundamental change. Some of them are reappraising how they actually recruit and actually, um, you know, bring talent into L and D because the the number of new skills is is so so large. And, and that is leaning on things like data analysis. It's, it's leaning on things like marketing communications. Mm. You know, and I think ultimately, when we think about measurement, it really circles back to the beginning of the learning experience discussion in that in order for that experience to be effective, you've got to know what outcomes you're after to start with and chase those things and build to those things. And if you do that, uh, the measurement sort of becomes self-evident, right? You've already determined what it is you're trying to change. You're building the interactions that you hope are going to get you there. And then the measurement is really a comparison between whether or not the people that are engaging in those interactions are actually exhibiting the changes that you're after. Um, so it really, you know, comes full circle. And in order to effectively measure, um, you need to start with that measurement at the beginning, and that's going to help you create that effective modern learning experience. Otherwise, how else are you going to be able to connect that experience to personal and uh, individual goals as well as the business goals if you don't know what those are at the beginning? So um, measurement is not an afterthought. It's not the end product. Um, it's really wrapped up in the entire learning experience. So it's a really key element and one that you should focus on pretty strongly. And with that, I think we're going to sign off on this particular audio blog, be sure to check out the other ones in this uh, learning experience series. Uh, we've done them on why an organization needs to think about a learning modern learning experience, as well as what goes into a good learning experience, and uh, another one on implementation of a modern learning experience. So we thank you for joining us uh, on this audio blog, and Carl, thanks for joining me. Thank you, so David. We'll see you all on the next one.